Dr. Jaffe, uh, would you recommend um, L-carnitine for somebody to lower cholesterol levels and how does that work? Well, one of a number of things that I would do if someone's cholesterol was elevated was make sure <clears throat> that they had enough of all of the essential nutrients so that their liver could regulate the level of fats in the body. And why does cholesterol go up? Well, we know it goes up when people need more hormones. It goes up when cells need more repair because cholesterol is a building block for many cells. And so when we look at what regulates blood fat production, blood fat metabolism, now you very quickly get to carnitine. So one of the members of the team that we recommend, of course, is that correct that deficiency, but also reduce the distress in life, reduce the anti-nutrient hormone disrupting forever molecules that come mostly from processed food, check the quality of your water. You'd be surprised how many times the tap water has toxic metals or other anti-nutrients in it. Many people call that gray water, not to be confused with drinking water. I happen to have a well that goes down to the third aquifer. It goes down below the hard surface of the earth. That water is pure. You can get healthy mineral waters, preferably in glass, not in plastic. And yes, hydration is a very important piece of your blood fats. In fact, if you want accurate measurement of blood fats, you have to have water only for 12 hours. If you have eight or 10 hours of water only, your blood fat levels will be higher, but that is simply an artifact. If you want accurate cholesterol or other blood lipid measurements, 12 hours of water only. You can read that in any standard textbook, but it's often overlooked. And very often people have an artificial or an artifactual or what you might call a pseudo hypercholesterolemia that resolves when they finally get a proper measurement after 12 hours of water only. The water part is important. You don't want to be without water for 12 hours. But there is no single solution to high blood cholesterol. And in fact, from my point of view, we actually should be measuring either oxidized cholesterol or oxidized LDL, one or the other, either is enough, not antibodies against oxidized LDL, but the actual damaged or oxidized molecule, which would mean a lack of magnesium choline citrate, a lack of ascorbate, maybe a lack of polyphenolics, maybe a lack of vitamin D. So it is a team effort and we bring that team to focus on your particular needs, including healthier blood fats. So we want you to have healthy blood fats. We want you to know what it means to properly measure and then properly nourish yourself so that your liver produces all the hormones you need in the balance that you need them. So that when you have challenges like cells that are being damaged by air pollutants or other toxicants, your body, your liver can produce enough cholesterol to repair those cells. I've taken care of people who have had higher blood cholesterol levels because their lifestyle was such that they needed to repair much more than the average. But I made sure their oxidized LDL or their oxidized cholesterol was undetectable by having enough protective antioxidant like ascorbate and polyphenolics to make your granulocytes or your first line repair cells more active. And so I think of it as a symphony, a ballet, or a choreography. And yes, each component is very important. Without any instrument, the symphony is not complete. But there's no magic one to undo all the rest.